Have you ever wondered what it takes to be a serial killer? We usually think of the infamous names like Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, or Jack the Ripper. And serial killers, they fascinate us, becoming the focus of movies, documentaries, and endless media coverage. Typically, we associate serial killers with men who are white, cisgendered, heterosexual, and often have violent sexual motivations. And traditionally, definitions of serial killers have excluded women. I should mention that most of the research was focused on male serial killers. Which makes sense when you consider that only one out of six serial killers are going to be women. And serial murder is quite rare, making it less percent of all murders. With female serial killers being only a small percentage of that. But the most interesting part is how different female serial killers are compared to their counterparts, especially how the media perceives them. Society often paints women as nurturing, loving, motherly, and incapable of violence. And this may be why serial killers, who are female, are more difficult to detect. Male serial killers are more likely to tend to keep their trophies of their killings, ranging from the victim's jewelry to clothing, body parts, and even blood. Which could be the reason why you don't see many female serial killers, because they're not the ones getting caught with the evidence. Another big difference is that most female serial killers know their victims. About 90% kill people that they're close to, whether it's family members or spouses. And a prime example of this is Nanny Doss, the giggling grandma who killed at least 11 people, including her children and husbands, often for my financial gain. Unlike male serial killers who seek power and control, female killers tend to use their roles as wives and mothers who hide in plain sight. But let's get back to what it takes to be a serial killer. It's through the implicit theory, which are beliefs and desires that shape our behavior. These beliefs are tough to change, even when faced with opposing evidence. And the first concept we'll talk about is the normalization of violence. For some, violence becomes a routine, completely normalized. And it's seen as an acceptable way to solve problems or gain respect. But it's also blamed by the victim's pre-existing issues. Our first example of this concept definitely fits the part where she has a pre-existing psychological issue and she completely normalizes violence. Villanelle, the main character of the 2018 Netflix series Killing Eve. She is a purpose-built killer working for the Twelve, an anarchist group formed in the 1970s to disrupt the world through chaos. Before becoming an assassin, Villanelle had nothing. She did show signs of anti-personality disorder, and this made her cold, calculating, and utterly devoid of guilt or remorse, which was one of the reasons why her mother gave her up when she was a child. However, she would have most likely been diagnosed with conduct disorder. She doesn't kill just for the money, but she becomes curious of death. There is no moral struggle. She attributes any pain to the victim as their own weakness seeing her killings as almost a playful event. Her extensive training in the Twelve made her a lethal weapon and gave her this luxurious lifestyle that she adores. For Villanelle, killing is a simple part of her job, and if she didn't kill, she wouldn't be able to have the life that she created for herself. This ties into the idea that violent people often normalizes violence to maintain their way of life. In fact, Villanelle's charm and wit made her even more dangerous. She is the textbook case of someone who normalizes violence, turning it into a means of survival, indulgence, and somewhat of this concept of predatory aggression, where it's not out of hatred or revenge, it's just business, not personal. The second topic that we'll talk about is the be beat or be beaten mindset in implicit theory where violence is seen as a necessary for survival. People with this mindset believe that they must act aggressively to avoid being victimized, often interpreting others' actions as threats. And it's about self-preservation, striking first to protect ourselves. This theory explains much of Aileen Warno's behavior, often called America's first female killer. She was convicted of killing seven men, 
Again, we go back to this idea that serial killers need to have this sexual motivation, and you'll see why I say this. Warner wasn't just killing for the thrill of it. Her actions were shaped by life of abuse. From childhood, she was faced with sexual and physical abuse from her grandfather, and she was abandoned by her mother. By teen, she learned to exchange sex for drugs and alcohol, which may be a prerequisite to the path of her prostitution. When she began killing, Warnos wasn't necessarily immediate danger from her victims. Instead, her violent actions were a reaction to years of abuse and control that she had suffered from. She saw her murder as the only way to reclaim her power to stop being victimized again and again. Her decision to kill was an attempt to regain her autonomy, fueled by her belief to survive, that she had to beat others before they beat her. In Elaine Warno's case, this mindset of be beat or be beaten shaped her violent path as she sought to protect herself in a world that constantly exploited her. And then there are some serial killers who see themselves as enforcers of justice. Take Dre from the 2023 series Swarm. Her obsession with the pop star Nyjah drove her to violence, believing that she was acting as judge, jury, and executor to protect Nyjah's image. Dre's distorted sense of morality led her to murder anyone who insulted her idol by riven skew of belief that her violent actions were justified. Unlike Villanelle, Dre's violent behavior was always impulsive, driven by powerful emotion and psychological arousal, such as when she felt abandoned, rejected, or when her idol Anija is disrespected. The concept of being both protector and punisher is important to the understanding of I am law mentality of female serial killers. Dre temporarily finds this relief in her violent acts, much like serial killers who feel this profound sense of calmness after a murder. The urge to kill builds within her over time, and each murder allows her this momentarily escape the emotional numbness that she constantly battles. However, this relief is fleeting, pushing her towards the next kill, as the cycle just repeats like many serial killers like her. And our last implicit theory is what I think is the most dangerous, which is, I get out of control, where we can see that some people's attributes in their violence is to the lack of self-control, explaining their actions as a result of uncontrollable anger or impulse, and holds others responsible for triggering them into their violent outbursts. Love Quinn from the 2018 series You exemplifies this mindset. Despite her loving facade, Love is very capable of extreme violence when she feels threatened. Love's violence is rooted in her deep fear of abandonment. And this is how we see it in her first husband, James, whom she killed when he tried to leave her. Though she appears in control, her actions are driven by the need to protect herself when she feels threatened in relationship. And her behavior mirrors that of Joe Goldberg, the main character of the series, when she's very obsessive and possessive and driven by this intense passion. And according to the out of control theory, her violence aren't always about losing control in the moment of rage, but instead an extent of deep seated sense of being pushed to her limits. In her case, it's less about the sudden loss of control, but more of the feeling that she was forced into extreme measures by her circumstances that other people made for her. So, does this theory create a serial killer? Well, to be anticlimactic, no. None of these implicit theories alone make a serial killer, but it is their actions that do. But. The next time that you're vibing to that one song about killing Bill or binging a murder series, take a second and think about which one of these theories might explain their violent behavior. Who knows?
You might just get inside of the mind of the serial killer.